do our dead level best to teach them the word, and we should. Sunday school class, so on and so forth. We should. The letter killeth, the spirit makes alive. It's when I met God for myself, as the spirit of God moved up my heart as a nine-year-old boy, that I began to realize how powerful and true the word of God was that the Sunday school teacher was trying to teach me. All of a sudden, light bulb came on. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. What those generation that's in the back back there need is not only taught the word, they need to meet the word. Yes. And the word has a name, and his name is Jesus. Yes. And Jesus said, I'm going away, but there's one coming after me that's just like me. He's not me, but he'll represent me. Yes. He said, I'll pray the Father, and he'll send you Spirit. Mm, that's good preaching. If you want religion, that's fine. But I don't want to lose the generation that's back there. So I say fooey on religion. Give us the real deal. Yes. Yes. Give us the real deal. God. Give us the real God. You say, well, the movement of the Spirit bothers me. You know, scares me because, yeah, it's true. Where there's fire, there will be wildfire. I'd rather have a little wildfire than no fire. Amen. Come on, that's good preaching. Amen. Don't shout me down while I'm preaching. Amen. What can I do to help you, Elisha asks. Tell me, what do you have in the house? So he asked her a question, how can I help? And then he asked another question, trying to help her know how he can help her. What do you already have in your hands? God will ask you, but he'll help you answer correctly. What can I do to help you? What can God do to help us in this generation? A generation that is bombarded with crack and meth. A generation that is bombarded on TV and everywhere we look with nudity and perversion and bondage. And not only that, but now in this generation, it's not just sex between a man and a woman, a boy and a girl, but lesbianism and homosexuality has become very prevalent. And a stamp of approval has been placed on it in this generation that it's okay. And our high schools and our junior highs are across the nation at an all-time high. Young ladies are having sexual activity with each other and it's being made okay. I say we need revival. Because the word of God says it's not okay. What do you have in the house? You know, we have vessels that can be filled with God. We have a little jar of oil. We have a little bit that God has done for us. That's what she says here. I don't have anything. Tell me what do you have. Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. She said, well, I don't have anything. But, but wait a minute. A little bit of, a little bit of oil. What, what do you have? I may not have a lot, but I have a little bit that God has done for me. And so what I can offer to God is what he's already done for me. And I'll, if I offer him what he's already done for me, he'll take it and multiply it and make it into much. Yeah. And if churches like ours will give him what we've got instead of arguing over, over, with each other over things that don't even matter. But coming together and saying, God, this is all we've got. Little jars of oil just scattered everywhere. We'll give them to you. You know what he'll do? He'll keep pouring out. Yeah. And I'll something else that will be saved. church, perfect revival, perfect move of God? Do you think there's going to be fire without wildfire? Do you think there's going to be a perfect revival? No! Jump in! Well, I don't know, you know. Some of those people get crazy and they push a little bit. They shake a little bit. Will you hear me teach? I said, I 
steer this revival, not control it. When you pray for somebody, don't push on them. Let the Holy Spirit do the pushing. If he wants them to fall, he'll make them fall. Don't shake them, let him do the shaking. Right? Men, when you pray for ladies, don't put your hands in the inappropriate places. Don't. When you see me pray for a woman, you see I never put my hand on their belt. Either have them put their hand there or another lady put their hand there. And then I put my fingertips on their hand. Often I feel led to pray for that area because what did I say earlier? That's where your spirit is. So these are just little names that we have to put. Don't stay back because, you know, I don't want to go. It's not going to be a perfect move of God until we get to heaven. Hallelujah. But we need a move of God anyway. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 And Elisha asks, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting the jars aside as they are filled. So he says, take what you have and get as many empty vessels as you can get and just keep pouring. That's what he'll do. If we'll give him what we got, he'll multiply it and use us to pour in to more empty vessels. God will pour out if he has something to pour into. Are you something that God can pour into? Or are you so stuffed with stuff it doesn't matter that God has no room to pour into you. <clears throat> and that hinders you from being a part of the miracle. So, almost done. She did as she was told. Her sons brought many jars to her. She filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Amen. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. Amen. This is the last verse. He said, there aren't any more. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. Now, the story itself is great, and for her, it's all great, because the Bible says it was enough oil to sell, pay the creditors, and have money to live on yes. from there. So it's great. But for us, spiritually speaking, it's not what we want to end with. There were no more vessels to fill, so what happened? The oil stopped. May there always be a vessel to fill. May there always be a sinner in the house who needs to come to Jesus. Because Monday through Saturday, we've been the preacher God's called us to be. May there always be in the house, listen to this, believers who aren't stuffed to the brim with stuff that doesn't matter. That have room for God. There's more. more, more. And may there always be empty vessels. 